Well, here we are looking at security policy, and I have to tell you, I'm excited. I, I'm excited we're going to move in. This is the first of nine videos delving into security policy. And you might ask, why are you excited about security policy? Well, I'm excited because somebody has to be excited about security policy. If I came in with a monotone voice and said, oh, for the next hour, you know, we're going to talk about security policy, you wouldn't be excited. So let's get excited and learn what we can because it is an important topic. And it's one of those things that can provide that framework. It's not sufficient by itself, but it can provide that framework for a very effective uh, computer security and privacy program within your business or organization. So okay, let's go in and look at what our agenda is going to be, what we're going to try to uh, accomplish uh, over these next nine videos. Well, we're going to look at why do we have policy, why is it important, look at the differences between uh, policy standards and practices or guidelines and why those words are different, what they mean. Uh, look at three different ways of implementing uh, policy. We'll look into the uh, enterprise information security policy, look at an issue specific security policy, and then look at a system specific security policy. And when we get into that uh, system specific, we'll get into some other characteristics, things like access lists, information, or I'm sorry, intrusion detection systems, and intrusion prevention systems. And then we'll finish up by looking at policy guidelines and policy phases through the uh, security development life cycle model. Remember we covered that uh, back in uh, chapter one or two. Oh, it seems so long ago. Uh, but uh, we'll look at uh, policy and how it fits within that perspective. But if we're going to look back, then perhaps we should look back at our CNSS model. Remember policy is going to be one of those key components in terms of addressing uh, how we prevent the or, or protect the organization against attacks against our confidentiality, integrity, or availability during the phases of, of uh, data in storage, data in transit, or data being processed. And we list some of those attacks down there, but you know, these should be old hat at this point. We've already talked about the defining each of these attacks. We've uh, talked about what part of the model they attack, and we've uh, talked about whether you use policy education or training to respond to these uh, types of attacks. Okay, enough of a, uh, a reminder, a, a visit back down history lane. Let's look at the lesson objectives now for uh, uh, this particular chapter. So here we go. Uh, what we want to be able to do is talk about policy and its central role in a information security program talk about three different types of policy, and then talk about how do you develop, implement, and maintain uh, these uh, policies over time. And as you do that, you know, one of those ways of uh, uh, implementing this is, is, is starting with well, what is information security policy? So, and look, there's a typo there. So it's information security policy explains not he will, how about the will of the organization in, and their management and controlling the behavior of employees. And here you get three kind of fundamental rules associated with policy. One, you never want to conflict with law, because guess what? Every time policy fights with law, law wins. Every single time. So uh, law is going to trump policy. You want to make sure that there's not a conflict there. You want to make sure, kind of corollary to that, that policy must stand up in court if challenged. And so you want your legal team looking at policy as it's being developed. And I can tell you within uh, the University System of Georgia, the secretary of the board, the person who controls uh, the policy document is actually the legal team. Uh, very important. And then finally, uh, writing policy and then walking away from it is not helpful. Uh, policy has to be supported, it has to be administered, and it has to be conveyed to all of the employees. And so it's just a component in your overall approach, but you don't want to write it and walk away and say, well, obviously everyone will read this and follow this. It's, that's not true. It doesn't work that way. All right, some other things. Must contribute to the success of your organization. Uh, you can write policies on everything, but if they're not aligned with the success of the organization, you're just wasting everybody's time. Nobody's going to read it. 
Uh, management does have a responsibility to make sure that it's shared and that everyone knows about it and any user should be involved as you're developing policy. Again, they're going to provide the best insight into uh, how things really work within the organization and you always want them involved as you're developing uh, that policy. Let's move forward now and kind of look at what we call the bullseye model of policy development. So as you think about <clears throat> this bullseye model, the idea behind this is that policies, networks, systems, and applications all work together. And you want to have a defense in depth uh, as you're trying to protect those actual applications. So policies, those kind of standard ways of doing things, are going to be an important component. And then at the, at the network level, that's where external threats, at least, are going to first meet your systems. And again, you want some policies around that, you want some educational activities and training around that, and you want some technology to help protect your networks. You want those same three, that policy, uh, training education awareness, and technology focused on your systems and protecting the underlying operating systems and BIOS uh, so that threats cannot penetrate uh, through uh, that uh, channel. And then finally, you need to protect uh, the actual application uh, itself. So uh, think of protecting your applications through this bullseye model, and it's clear uh, the critical role that policies play in protecting applications. And I've kind of talked about all of this, uh, so there's no need for me to go over this slide again. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this first of nine videos looking at policy and how it applies to computer security. And during the uh, next video, we're going to look at policy standards and uh, practices or guidelines and what those mean, what those words mean, and how each reinforces the other. Thanks for listening. Talk to you. I'll see you soon.